Have you ever been to a racetrack? Have you ever bet on horses? Have you ever bred horses? If you want to do all of the above, but you don't want to manage the manure after the fact, I have a way better option for you. Instead of managing your own barn and managing your own horses, you can put it all on the blockchain and play this horse racing game called Zed Run. I want to tell you about Zed Run because it's already been popular for a couple of years and I think it's going to be popular for years to come still. I'm Jack for the Dab Gamble Drop. And before I dive deep into Zed Run, I want to remind you to like this video and please subscribe to our channel so I can keep giving you more Web3 content. Now that that's out of the way, let me start by giving you a basic understanding of Zed Run. Zed Run is an amazing, immersive, and revolutionary blockchain game where you can bet on horses. It launched in 2019 and ever since it went live, people like you and I who have an affinity for horses and taking risks could place wagers on horse races every single hour of the day. Zed Run is the local horse racing track that just never shuts down. Despite the fact that Zed Run users exchange about half a million dollars in trading volume every day and the fully diluted market cap is only about 14-15 million dollars, there's still a dedicated community around the game across social platforms so you can get involved with other users and learn about it that way before you even dive in, which I think is cool. Let's talk more about engaging with the platform itself. The whole point of the game is that you enter races to win tournaments and cash prizes and you breed horses to hopefully come out with better performing horses that win more races and more cash prizes. And of course just like any blockchain based decentralized game the horses and assets you buy are NFTs. So you actually own them and you're the one that uses them within the environment to try to breed more horses and win more races. But winning races isn't as simple as buying NFTs and just breeding as many horses as you can. You have to consider which horses go well together in terms of breeding new offspring that have better traits to offer so that you can be more competitive in future races. The ability of each horse to win races is determined by a combination of four distinct traits. The bloodline, the genotype, the breed type, and the coat color. And of course, like any form of gaming or gambling, there's risk here. You're not going to win or lose every race, and you're not always going to know which race you're going to do well in. There's an element of surprise in Zed Run, which is part of the fun. At its heart though, Zed Run is indeed a play to earn game. The more races you enter and win, the more likely you are to make money on a consistent basis. The good news is, you don't have to make money just by entering races with the horses. As you know, in Web3, because NFTs are yours and you control the assets, the horses themselves have value, so if all you do is keep breeding more and more horses, you can sell the offspring for a profit to somebody who may not be able to afford to enter the game by buying horses originally. Maybe you give them a discount and they're happy to get involved and you make some money. And of course, once you breed horses and want to sell them, you can either engage in private sales with people you know in the Zed Run community, or you can go to a secondary NFT marketplace like OpenSea and list your horses there for sale. So as an example, let's say you have $500 and you want to make money trying to breed horses. Here's what you're going to do. The first step is to select horses for breeding. Naturally, you're going to need a male and female horse. If you're looking for horses to buy, you can look at a tool like Haku, which allows you to filter through different horses based on their Z number, the number of horses they've raced, and their overall status. I'm not going to go over Z numbers in this video, but pretty much what you want to do is you want to pick horses that haven't run any races ideally. The more races a horse has run, the less valuable it becomes over time. I think the reason that mechanism exists is so that it incentivizes you to keep buying new horses. In order to buy a male horse, it's likely that you'll have to make more than one offer because your first offer may not get accepted. You should be able to get a male horse for between $100 and $200, and I should let you know that female horses generally cost more money. So if you need a male and female horse, odds are you're going to have to spend at least $400. One thing you have to consider when breeding horses is that they have to be along the same breeding timeline, which means you better pick a male and female horse that are ready to produce offspring. I like the whole idea because it makes the game feel a little bit more realistic, and of course from a game mechanics standpoint, it encourages you to keep playing and to find a good fit for breeding good offspring. Once you've found your male and female horses, you're ready to get them to breed. The reason I mentioned earlier that you want your male and female horse to cost less than $200 each is because it may cost you between $70 and $100 to actually initiate the breeding process and produce the offspring. And don't forget that if you're going to sell the offspring, you're going to need to list the offspring, which is also going to cost you gas fees. I would recommend checking current market prices for other horses so that you can price yours competitively because after all, you're in the breeding process to make a profit and not necessarily 
barely enter races. Remember to exercise patience and stay within your budget. Not all of the horses you breed are going to sell at the prices you want, and even if you are going to enter races, you're not always going to win. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this for a quick flip. I would recommend this to players who are interested in horse racing and want to get involved in the action, and that way if you have fun doing it, you won't think as much about listing your horses right away. Especially when the crypto world is in a down market the way it is now. Overall, if you take your time and think critically about how you're pricing your horses, which ones you're buying, and how long you're willing to wait to find a buyer on the other side of a transaction, you should still be able to build a profitable stable of horses using just under $500. So now you have your horses and your little stable. Let's talk about how to actually play the game Zedrun. All you need to start playing Zedrun is to buy a few horses. You can use a traditional Web3 wallet like Trust Wallet or MetaMask to get started. You can buy and sell horses on Zedrun's own marketplace or you can use another marketplace like OpenSea which is far more popular. Once you have your horses and you start to enter races, you'll notice there are different classes of races. You can't enter the highest classes right away unless you spend a lot of money. So assuming you're starting at the beginning, you can win races over time and your horses move up in the rankings and presumably the competition gets a little bit stiffer too, but there's also a bigger prize at the end of the finish line. All you want to do is keep your horses moving up classes, and if you want to reinvest the profits, you want to keep breeding horses. Because as you build a reputation for winning races, your horses move up in classes, and you have opportunities to make more and more money. Now obviously, if you reinvest this money into your own stable and keep breeding younger and younger horses, you can build a relatively large stable and start making real money. People were making thousands of dollars with Zed Run when it first became popular because the market cap was a lot higher and the community was on fire about the game itself. Keep in mind that when you enter races, you're going to want to consider all sorts of data. In traditional horse racing, you want to know if your horse is good on grass or dirt, how many races they've entered, how old the horse is, etc, etc. In Zed Run, you'll want to consider whether your horse is optimized for stamina or power or speed or what have you. The best strategy for beginners using Zed Run is to actually put your horses into races. Yes, it can be appealing to breed a stable of horses right away, but if you don't understand market dynamics and you don't know how different genotypes mix together to create winning breeds of horses, then you might be taking on some risks that you're not willing to lose money on. On the other hand, if you enter races, even beginner races that don't cost any money, over time you're developing a more competitive horse, and then when you start winning the occasional race, you can reinvest some of those profits into paying gas fees so that you can breed more horses. That to me is the better way to hedge against losing money on these horses and actually turning a profit in the long run. Now that you understand the basics of how to play Zedron and make money with it, it's time to strap your little jockey onto its horse and win some races. Let me know what you think about these kinds of games in the comments. For now, I'm Jack for the Dap Gamble Drop, and I'll see you again next time.